Well guys, got something pretty exciting to talk about today. My special edition gun <laughs> that I've been working on with Utah Air Guns for a while. And the reason it's taken a while is because this is not just a standard FX impact that's had a, a custom dip or a, or a Cerakote job. There are actually some internal modifications as well. The way I saw it, if I was going to do something special, I wanted it to be very special. So I've spent some time working on a few things inside and what makes this something that I want to get behind is the fact that this is my hunting setup that I use here in Africa in African conditions where you've got dust getting into it, uh, where you've got to take long range shots in crazy wind and this thing has not let me down. So I know in backing this product that you're going to get something that will work and will work in the conditions that I shoot in as well. Uh, I do want to mention before we get more into detail that I have added a few extra things on here that won't be standard with the gun. For example, this GTEC butt plate. Uh, that's not something you can get from Utah Air Guns right now, so they're not going to have that put on. But of course, they've got other options that you can ask for, like the Sabre Tactical uh, butt plate with this Sabre Tactical bag, bag rider or the Crawford and Lip butt plate, which is also fantastic. So there are options. And of course, extras like the Bipod and and the scope. I didn't really want to make that as standard with the setup in case you've already got your own scope or your own bar pod. <laughs> However, these parts are also available from Utah Air Guns. So if you buy the gun, you can obviously ask for these extras. But without further ado, let's get into the backstory because every good custom gun has a good backstory, right? <laughs> well, I guess the story here was I've been slightly changing um, certain settings and and certain aspects of my guns to make them more suitable for the kind of shooting I do. So I'm very much into long range shooting, but the long range shooting I do is on small critters that don't give you much time for the shot. So for me, ballistic coefficient is king. That was what got the whole slug thing started. You know, I've been working on slugs for a long time. On the FX's slug liners, I've been working on trying to get slugs to the mass market, which I think has been really successful. We've been able to do that. But I started progressing towards heavier slugs um, because of their high ballistic coefficient, because of their bigger knockdown power. And I ended up settling on an impact with 700 millimeter barrel, power plenum, and a few other things which I'll get to in a moment, which is capable of shooting a 30 to 34 grain slug at, you know, 1000 feet per second plus. This current setup right now is shooting uh, 34 grain slugs, 217 slugs at 990 feet per second, and it does it easily. You know, it doesn't feel like it's overdoing itself or overworking itself, which can be a problem when you push air guns hard. You know, this thing is still printing tight at 100 yards. It's still knocking everything down. It's still a perfect setup. And that is not due to the fact that it's just a 700 millimeter barrel. It's due to some internal changes so i wanted to wait for the power plenum to come out before we launched this without the power plenum you have to push your reg to like 180 190 bar in order to get those powers i didn't want to do that so we waited for the power plenum and now i feel like this this gun's ready to launch but of course the power plenum is is a standard part on all fx guns now so what makes this one different let me put the gun down for a moment and let me take something out of my pocket and walk close to the camera and show you. I don't know how well you'll see this, but this is the standard FX pellet probe right over here. It's got the transfer port hole and it's got the round uh, you know, face over here that presses on the outside of your skirt. Uh, it works fantastic for pellets. It works fantastic for hybrid slugs. But this is what we've developed. Now, Put them side by side this one's got a pin this one's got the round flat surface the round flat surface is great for seating pellets nice and straight but it does limit your airflow it's like basically drilling your transfer port down to like five millimeters or something like that it's going to limit the, the airflow into your barrel which is obviously going to lose make cause you to lose power this probe is what we've been working on and it works in it improves the setup in two ways number one it increases airflow. So the surface area of this pin on the front is smaller than the surface area on the outside of this piece. Air flows through it better. The second part, and this is what makes me really excited, is that this thing is seating depth 
adjustable. So you can take an Allen key at the back, even when your probe is already fitted in the gun, and you can set little by little how deep that slug or that pellet is being seated into the chamber. We found that pellets are not quite as fussy with seating depth, but slugs are, are a bit more fussy. You want the O-drive of that slug to be a certain distance into or off the lands, as we all know from firearm shooting, and that's where this probe is going to change things. To add to that, slugs come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, so it is impossible to create a single fixed probe that is perfect for them all. An adjustable probe allows you to set the seating depth precisely for the long 30 to 36 grain slugs that this gun is designed to shoot, but change to lighter slugs or pellets if you decide to tune down. I should and will give credit to the guy who was the mastermind behind this probe. Hein Frommann is probably one of the best shooters in South Africa without a doubt. He's the current WRABF two-gun world champion. By two-gun, uh, I mean LV, which is light varmint, and HV, heavy varmint, 25-meter air rifle bench rest shooting. He won the, the, uh, the 2019 WRABF championship, which I filmed uh, in a video, I will uh, I will put a link down below so you can check out Hein. He's an absolute legend, really, really smart guy. And this was almost fully his design. He made a probe almost exactly like this for me and uh, sent it off to me. I, I tried it out. It worked wonders. And I asked his permission. I said, hey, is it okay if I, I suggest something like this to FX so they can, they can do something like this? And he said, absolutely. And the rest was up to Johan Axelson at FX. Johan put this together and it works incredible. So this is one of the things that makes my special edition impact different. This, this impact is going to come standard with this probe. It's the probe that I've been using in here without telling you for the past few months. So if you want to know if it works or not, just watch my videos over the past few months. You'll see that it works fantastic. I want to clarify that I'm not going to hog this technology for my special edition gun. I want it to be available to everyone. So I've told FX that... Um, after a while of this being out, they are very, very welcome to use it as an aftermarket part. So you can expect to have that available fairly soon and you can get it for your own impact as well if you don't want to spend the money on a new one in the special edition. The other thing that makes this gun different internally is actually happening right in the front here. You may have noticed that my Valve adjust in the front is almost adjusted all the way in, screwed in all the way to the bottom. And you might think, how the heck does Matt get so much power out of his impact with the valve adjuster screwed all the way in? Well, as you know, or as you may know, <laughs> the power plenum setup is, is quite different to the old impact setup. The old impact, you had the valve return spring inside here, and the front setup was simply a, a mechanical stop for the valve to make it almost stop and bounce back. The power plenum changed that. The power plenum shifted the valve return spring all the way to the front. So, and that helps with airflow through the plenum and increases the volume slightly. But mostly I think it's just, I just think it's a better system because you actually want to be able to adjust your valve return spring from the back or from the front. The issue with this is that you can't really make a valve return spring that's adjustable enough to be used at like sub 12 foot pound and at the powers that I wanted to achieve with this gun. So we had to think of think out the box and make something entirely new. I know some guys have literally taken this front valve adjuster and taken the valve return spring completely out and to try to get more power. That's not such a great idea because there's, then there's nothing stopping that valve pin from shooting out the front, okay? So we wanted to make an adjustment in a way that is safe and a way that is, is uh, damage proof that's not going to damage the gun. I've been using this for months now and it's been working perfectly. So what did we change? So in here we've actually switched the valve uh, return spring completely with a much weaker one. What this does is it allows you to get the most out of your 700 millimeter barrel. With the standard valve return spring and a 700 millimeter barrel if you try and go to high reg pressures, like what we've got on this gun, what's my reg pressure now? 170 bar. If you try and go to 170 bar on a 700 millimeter barrel with a standard valve return spring, you're gonna find that the valve is actually closing long before the slug has reached the end of the barrel. And what that means is you're not gonna get the most out of your 700 millimeter barrel. 
when shooting at high rake pressures. A high rake pressure normally would cause your valve to close a bit faster. With the weaker valve return spring that will be standard on this special edition gun, you're gonna allow the valve to open, to stay open a bit longer, and that's gonna allow you to get these higher powers. Now obviously, there will be some adjustment needed, hence me turning my valve adjuster back. But basically the way I would, I would explain it is, you wanna adjust your valve adjuster back until the point where you start to just see velocities dropping. That's the point at which the valve is closing close to when the slug is at the end of the barrel. So that means you're gonna get decent efficiency, you're gonna get decent uh, sound coming out the end of the barrel, it's not gonna bark too loud, especially with this Donny FL Koi, which is, will be also be standard on the Special Edition gun. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be accurate as well. It's not gonna feel overpowered. I think, you know, these extra parts, the probe, the, the uh, weaker valve return spring, have really helped from a technical aspect to try and make this gun powerful at like 70 to 75 foot pounds without overpowering it in other words without pushing the gun so hard that it's that it'll break um, and then also it looks great on the outside as well so what have we done on the outside the big the big thing obviously is the the Cerakote job all the the OD green parts here the cheek piece the pick rail and the the bottom over here is actually Cerakoted and Cerakoting is extremely hard, so you're gonna to struggle to scratch this, uh, this off. It's not like a, a paint or an anodizing, this is solid, solid on here. And then this is dipped over here with this, I think it's the Kuyu uh, camo here, green color, oh, it's just beautiful. Especially in an environment like this with your acacia trees and stuff, but it just looks badass. <laughs> and then uh, obviously a thicker grip over here. You can obviously ask Utah Air Guns to change this if you really want, but I really like these these thicker ergo grips as opposed to the standard FX ones. I like having this PC at the back and I like the fact that the green matches this as well. I think it looks really cool. Another part that I'm really excited about is the Picatinny rail. Now I know you're thinking why is the Picatinny rail exciting? Well I've kind of been pestering FX for a long time and I think a few other guys have as well to, to build 20 MOA of, of tilt into the Picatinny rail. What this does is it, it not only helps for long range shooting, in, a, in, a, in other words, it extends the overall travel of your scope by adding 20 MOA, 20 MOA or, or like six moles of elevation, but it also allows your scope to be at its optical center or more or less at its optical center when zeroed at like 25 to 50 yards, you know. Um, when, when zeroing air guns at these closer ranges, you want a bit of tilt built in because your scope is actually trying to adjust further down than it would on a normal firearm. So FX listened, they put the 20 MOA tilt into the, the rail. That was one of the things I was waiting for before we released this, released this gun. And you don't know this, but this 20 MOA rail has actually been standard on impacts for a few months now. Um, so you're not losing out if you, if you don't buy this exact gun. I just wanted to let you know that this gun will have that built in, which helps a lot for long range shooting. So I do plan to have this gun uh, sold through Utah Air Guns with a slug liner as standard, but obviously you can request something else if you want. You may just not get the pin probe, um, which is in 22 caliber right now, if you get something else. And you may not need it if you're getting like a, a pellet liner, for example, because it's not really gonna help with your, your seating depth or your um, yeah, or getting extra power. You're not going to need the extra power if you're shooting pellets. But what I did was I went to Sweden. I, I made about 50 uh, 22 caliber slug liners myself on the machine. And I tested all of them myself. Um, and I sent them over to Justin. So there's a good chance if you buy one of these guns that you'll get a barrel that I made myself at the factory and that I tested myself. And it literally was shooting through almost the same hole at, at 40 meters. Um, but then obviously the superior liners came along and I've tested the superior liners. All of them are shooting just as well as any of the barrels that I made. So there isn't really a need for you to re request a barrel that I made. Honestly, the superior liners are shooting just as well as those handmade barrels. But you're gonna get a really good barrel and you're gonna get the most out of it shooting heavy slugs with a setup. This gun is designed entirely around hunting and precision rifle shooting where you are engaging targets at unknown ranges. A flat trajectory is what you need for this, and that's exactly what the setup gives you. 
34 to 36 grain is about the maximum length slug that will fit into a 22 cal FX magazine and the twist rate of the slug liner just happens to be perfect for this weight. Comparing this gun shooting 34 grain 22 caliber slugs to a 30 cal shooting JSBs at 100 meters at the same speed with the same 25 meter zero, this is the difference. Not only do you get more than a mil less drop, you also get a third of the wind drift. Now change the 30 cal velocity to 880 feet per second where it's most accurate and you can see just how superior the slug setup is for long range shooting. Here is the shot string at 70 foot pounds shooting the same 34 grain 22 cal slug. That's about 47 shots at 960 feet per second or let's just say 45. I think that's pretty good considering the power you're getting. At 100 yards, the slug is still carrying 55 foot-pounds of energy, and at 300 yards, it's carrying 35, which is more than most 22 cal pellet guns at the muzzle. I'll be honest with you, um, at this stage, when I'm making this video, we haven't fully finalized what all the uh, external parts are going to be that come standard with this. Um, I think, don't even think Utah Air Guns has put it on their, on their website at the time of filming this, but at the time of publishing this, it will be, so you can go check it out. We weren't really sure which aftermarket extras we should include because certain things are not necessary for many, for many people. So for example, the Sabre Tactical cocking lever, amb ambidextrous cocking lever, it only really benefits you if you are left-handed or if you want to shoot left-handed in, in speed shooting or anything. So we thought, well, the extra cost of having this on is not really gonna benefit you if you're right-handed, so why include it as standard? However, you can request these extra parts if you want them. If you're left-handed, request this part. They can put a left-handed cocking lever on for you and it will look fantastic. Um, the bag rider, I think, probably will be standard. The butt plate probably won't. That's something you can request. Um, I must say that the, once you've got the bag rider on here, the butt plate doesn't really add, an aftermarket butt plate doesn't really help you much. Um, I personally like something with this uh, bag rider that can move up and down this rear pod. But honestly, with, with this Sabre Tactical right on here and a sandbag, you don't really need it. And then obviously the bar pod and the scope and the rings you will have to buy yourself. Although I do want to possibly work out something with Utah Air Guns where if you put a, an Element uh, Titan or, or Nexus on top, um, you get a little discount or something like that on that scope. But I haven't kind of figured that out with them yet, so I can't promise anything. The 580cc bottle, again, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if they're going to include this as standard or not. I would re very much like them to, but I think there is a bit of a supply and demand issue right now. I will get onto that with Utah Air Guns though, and I will confirm in a caption on the screen here whether it's uh, part of the setup or not. And that is the Matt Dubber Special Edition Impact, guys. <laughs> I hope you are, you are just as excited about this as I am. I've been working on this for a long time. I think it's going to be a, an awesome uh, long-range machine uh, that's going to do a great job without pushing the gun too hard. And yeah, it will be available on the Utah Egan's website, obviously. I'll put a link down below to that. But thanks for watching. If you want to buy one of these, that would help me greatly. I will get a, a small commission from every gun that's sold, so it helps going towards supporting this channel and of course you're going to see more of this gun on my channel in the future thanks for watching i'll see you next time